Hope you are all well. Me, I've got a bit of a cold, so bear with me. Today I want to do a quick video on how to add zoom and pan motion to your time-lapse clips. Now you can add these motions to other types of media. It doesn't just have to be uh, time-lapse clips. It could be any footage that's shot on a stationary platform like a tripod or even a photograph that you've added in to DaVinci. Uh, whether you're adding it in for a vlog or you're making a uh, slideshow or whatever. Uh, these, this process will work for all of that, but uh, for this uh, video, I'm mostly uh, working with time-lapse clips. Uh, the other thing to mention is that I'm going to use the dynamic zoom tool in DaVinci Resolve for this tutorial. And if, so if you're interested in the transform, at least for this one, uh, this isn't the video for you and you probably want to stop watching at this point. Okay, so I have already added in a couple of clips onto my timeline and you want to uh, make sure that you have your inspector opened um, so that you can access the dynamic zoom tool, which is right here. It's currently clicked off. Uh, the other thing that I just want to show you at the outset is over here, um, you can change your, your view. So on here you want to make sure you have your dynamic zoom uh, selected and that will show you uh, how the dynamic zoom will be added to the clip that you're working on. Okay so I'm going to go ahead and turn on dynamic zoom on this selected clip and uh, the first thing to note is that it will start with the green uh, box and it will zoom out to the red. So green is where the where the transition or the motion starts and red is where the motion ends. So you'll see that when I run the clip it's uh, it had zoomed in and it's now it's starting to pull back out. Okay if you want to start that so that the zoom starts from the edge of the clip and then zooms in as opposed to zooms out then you just have to hit the swap button and there you have the green um, box on the outside and the red box on the inside and that creates a zoom in if you want to swap it back to the zoom out default uh, just hit swap again of course you can you can drag your boxes and do that manually as well but you can also uh, adjust where the um, box or where the motion will start from and where it will end by clicking on the box and then holding the the mouse button down and dragging it uh, the other thing I'll mention is that if you want to um, change the um, the speed at which the motion occurs, you can use the ease in, ease out, and then ease in and out and out. Now, two things that I just want to mention when you're, especially when you're doing um, these sort of zoom in and zoom out motions, you want to keep in mind the resolution of the files that you're working with. So if you have a low resolution file like 720p or 1080p, or even a 4K clip, then you want to be careful that you don't zoom in uh, too much because the zoomed in clip will have a, a naturally a lower resolution and yeah, so you have to worry about quality. So think about that. The second thing I want to mention, at least for time lapse, is um, too much uh, motion uh, can look unnatural. And so and this is more of a stylistic preference. I like to keep the motion uh, more subtle. So I tend to uh, have minimal amounts of zoom when I look at my my clips. So that's basically how you add a zoom in and zoom out motion to your uh, clip. Now let's just jump over to the to the next clip and let's add in a uh, pan motion. So here's a good example of a clip that's actually you know look good but um, without any additional motion added it's just kind of boring so in this situation, I'd, I would add a, a pan to move um, from the left hand of the screen to the right hand. And so the way to do that is to decide, um, it doesn't matter which box you use as your start or your end point because you can easily switch between them. But I've, I've dragged one box over to the side, and there might be other ways to do this, but uh, and then I 
make the other box just line up. Okay, so that's that's lined up, and so I'm going to swap those so that it starts to the left and works to the right, basically in the same direction as the car. That's a bit more natural. Let's just see how that looks. Okay, so I think that looks a lot better. Um, you can see the resolution does not look as good. I actually punched in that far. So if I was going to do this for a project, I would actually maybe decrease the, the amount of the pan so that I get a better resolution file. Okay, so that's looking a little bit better now. And of course, you can always adjust uh, how the image appears in the, uh, in the clip by moving the boxes around to get the framing that you're looking for. Again, you can also use your ease in, ease out, and ease in and out uh, options to, to change the speed at which the motion uh, occurs across the, um, the clip. Okay, so that's how you add. Uh, zoom in and pan motions to your time-lapse clips. Uh, DaVinci Resolve is great for this. It's super easy. Um, there's more that you can do with the transform tool, and I'll maybe show you that on the next one for advanced motion. But for simple zoom in and zoom out and pan motions, dy dynamic zoom works great. Hopefully you uh, got something out of this video, and uh, we will see you on the next one.